Tell why he said the battle is the fiercest at the gates of breakthrough. He said the church has reached a stage of breakthrough. This is the breakthrough where the church will conquer the world and Jesus Christ will come and reign. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Your amen is like a ditapelo. Are you blessed? Amen. Okay, I mean you are warm. It's not cold inside, yeah. If you are cold, we will kill you. bury the ice, and it's not our fault. <laughs> If you are cold, you are wearing ice blocks and it's not our... This place is warm. It's very warm. On Sunday, it will even be warmer than this. Amen? We're going to make sure that we fellowship in warmth. What I don't like, my belief is I cannot go to the office and be comfortable to do my work and go to church and not be comfortable to fellowship. Hallelujah. The world cannot raise the standard that is better than the church. That is my belief. Amen. If in the office they make you comfortable with air cons and all that, we will match them and beat them. Hallelujah. Because the house of God, you should, be, you, you should worship in comfort. Hallelujah. I don't want you when you think about coming to church, your flesh start ministering unto you. Or, hey, I need the gloves. I want a copper head. We look at now. Kiss a visa, a ninja. We are no don't see. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. May God bless you. And all of you are watching us through the social medias, Facebook and YouTube. You are welcome. You are welcome tonight. We love you very much. We believe God that you are where you are because you couldn't come. And there are those that are watching us from all over, far away. You are welcome. I want you to take your notebook wherever you are. Take your phone, take notes, and receive the word. Hallelujah. Be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Being led by the Spirit. You know, I've said this before. I will say it again. Since the world began, or since the earth was created, an apple tree is still bearing apples. Amen? An orange tree is still bearing what? Oranges. And a mango tree is still bearing what? Mangoes. These trees haven't changed. Unless or otherwise human beings intervene, then they can change them. Now we have some genetically modified fruits and veggies. That is the intervention of human beings. But the nature by itself is still under the control of of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Never in a million years will you find a lion giving birth to an elephant. It's not going to happen unless human beings intervene. Lion, lion will continue giving birth to what? To lions. Why? They are still led by the Spirit of God. How do I know? It is clear in the Bible. Genesis 1-2. And the Spirit of the Lord was moving upon the, what? the face of the waters. When God speaks, Holy Spirit activated everything that is supposed to happen. Even nature today is still led by the Spirit. The sun still knows that it's still supposed to rise from the what? east ne? and set where? In the West. So the sun is not changing its movement. 
The moon is still, can you read the volume? The moon is still where it's supposed to be. Nothing has changed. I told you the story of the tsunami that most of the animals that died in the tsunami that killed hundreds and thousands of people, they were the animals that were domesticated by human beings. Most wild animals survived the tsunami. They were not killed by the tsunami. One of the guys who, who is the tour guide in elephants, or using the elephants, he said three days before the tsunami hit, the elephants were very much unsettled. They were uneasy. They could see that this, these animals are no longer comfortable where they were. They could pick up that there is an impending danger coming. And they say some of the elephants broke where they were tied up. And they began to run up the hill going to the higher place. And then after that, that when the tsunami hit, the elephants were well away in safety. Who warned them of the danger to come? The Holy Spirit. They are still connected to the essence of God. So how about we human beings? How did we reason ourselves outside the will and the submission of the Holy Spirit? How did we reach that place? Deception. The first sin that came into, into this world through Satan is the sin of deception. And that sin is still in force even to this day. Human beings have now have the capacity to deceive themselves. We know the consequences of things that we're not supposed to do. We know what will happen if we don't sow the seed in your garden, in your farm. You know what will happen if you don't plant. But still, human beings are resisting to be led by the Holy Spirit. Every time when I listen to the stories of people who were involved in terrible, terrible accidents, they will tell you that I knew it. I knew that I was not supposed to drive today. I knew that I was not supposed to go. But somehow, somehow, we have this ability to go against the Holy Spirit. No matter how loud he can talk, there is this cunning ability to override his voice and do what we will or what we wish to do. And mostly or more often, the consequences are dire. How do we change this? Firstly, we need to know that the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has all the emotions. He has all the feelings that you have. That's why the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you are sealed with. So, he is a human being. And many believe that when you grieve the Holy Spirit, he leaves you. No, he doesn't leave you. I, let, I can give you this perfect example. Grieving the Holy Spirit is like a husband and a wife. When the wife has done wrong, the husband has done wrong, when they are not talking to each other, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are divorced. It's just that, that one will lose the benefits. 
The same applies with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I can talk for myself. Years back, have I not be, have I not ignored the voice of the Holy Spirit? Some of the things that happened to me wouldn't have happened. Some of the pains that I went through wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened. Some of the losses that, I, that I've incurred wouldn't have happened. But after when I learned that there is someone that I can talk to, there is someone that I can walk with, there is someone that I can walk hand in hand with, his name is the Holy Spirit who is representing Jesus Christ here on earth. I've realized that, no, I'm not only working with the Holy Spirit, I'm working with the Godhead presented by the Holy Spirit. I'm working with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How do I know that? Jesus Christ said, for the Father lives in me. Whom was he referring to? The Holy Spirit. What does he do when he lives in him? He said, whatever the Father says, I do. Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed the Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good. Whom was he going about with? The Holy Spirit. The Bible said, Peter was praying, he went into a trance, he saw a sack of, of animals be dropped down to him. The voice said, Peter, wake up, kill and eat. He said, no, I cannot eat. And, the, and God said, that which God has sanctified, you cannot call what unclean. Whom was he talking to? The Holy Spirit. On the same time, the centurion was praying in his place. The angel came to him and said, there is Peter who's lodging by the sea. Send men unto him in Joppa. Let him come and share the word of life with you. And Peter and the, and, and the centurion took servants. The Bible said he took his trusted servants and sent them to Peter to call Peter to come and share the word with him. Who was directing them where to go? The Holy Spirit. The centurion and Peter have never met before. Peter did not know that the centurion existed. And the centurion did not know that Peter existed. Who was, who was busy setting up the meeting, the Holy Spirit. Why? He wanted the centurion to meet with his destiny helper. The Bible said, Peter, when he heard the knock on the door, the Holy Spirit said to him, the men that are knocking, I send them to you. Do not be afraid. Go with them. Peter took up and left with them. You see, Holy Spirit has the ability to set up people, places, things that must, that must be done, people that you must meet. And the Bible said, while Peter was still preaching, was still preaching, because he went to the house of the children, the, oh, the Holy Spirit came down upon the people. They were all baptized by the Holy Spirit. So while Peter was still preaching, Holy Spirit was saying, I found new people to lead. These ones will walk with me. These ones will be led by my voice. I want to put it to you today that learn to discern the voice Especially that voice that has control over your emotion. Any voice that speaks to you, you find yourself disturbed, angry, not wanting to do anything with the things of God or the house of God. I want to put, I want to put it to you that you are being misled by the kingdom of darkness. God said to me this week while we were busy fasting and praying, 
the Holy Spirit. He said, son, the time of the church of Moses is over. I said, what? What church of Moses? He said, let me explain it to you. Moses led the people from the wilderness. From Egypt to the wilderness. And what Moses was dealing with, he never fought any war. He was dealing with people's issues. Obedience and disobedience. Cases, sickness and diseases. That was what Moses was dealing with. He said to me, tell my people that the church, that time is over. We are now on the move of the Joshua generation church. The church that should be able to use their knees to fight because the battle is on. When the, they said to me, I said, why? He said, the battle is the fiercest at the gates of breakthrough. He said, the church has reached a stage of breakthrough. This is the breakthrough where the church will conquer the world and Jesus Christ will come and reign. He said, right now is the church that will be led by the Holy Spirit. The church that will pray without ceasing. Whom am I talking to? I'm talking to you, child of God. That what God is expecting you to do this season of COVID is not to turn your back from God. It's not to look at what the media is saying. It's for you to be led by the Holy Spirit. It's time for you to put your ear down in prayer because the Holy Spirit manifests where there is intense prayer. He speaks where somebody is seeking his face. You need to reach a stage where you say, as the deer panteth for the water bruise, so pants my soul for you, O God. You need to be hungry for God. Then the Holy Spirit will come and lead you to a place that God has prepared for you before the foundation of this world. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. The time for reasoning, the time for murmuring, the time for complaining in the body of Christ is over. While you are still busy pointing the mistakes of others, that is not your responsibility. Be led by the Holy Spirit and pray. Hallelujah. Why is he here? Why is the Holy Spirit here? The Holy Spirit is here to help you. Romans 8 verse 26 says, We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit pray for us and through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The first thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do for you and through you and by you is to lead you into that prayer session that you have never been before in your life. He wants to put you in a place that you have never been before in your life. What is that place? The closest to God, where you are that holy of holies. He wants you to pray in a way that God, you'll feel God next to you, God inside of you, God above you, God besides you. He wants to lead you to a place where you'll say, I cannot stop praying. I cannot say amen. He wants to teach you that. The time for looking at the mistakes in the church, in the body of Christ is over. It's time for you to change them through prayer. And the Holy Spirit is here to help you. I'm saying to students, I was called by one of the daughters, I said, Daddy, I'm writing. I said, the Holy Spirit will remind you everything that, needs, that you need to know after you have studied. He's here to do what? To help. Number two, he's here to teach. John 16, verse 13 to 15. Can you go to John 16, verse 13 to 15?
John 16, verse 13 to 15. John 16. I want you to know something. When the Holy Spirit is in charge, you won't have the ability to resist the voice of God. You won't have the ability to resist God. In other words, the rebellious spirit is quenched. It's destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us, let us read John Okay, I will start from 12. John 16, 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Listen to this. He will tell you things to come. Listen to this. He will tell you things to come. You are running around looking for prophets. Can I introduce you to the prophet of your life? The Holy Spirit. He will tell you things to come. You don't need anybody to tell you things to come. All that you need to do, develop an intimacy. A deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. Develop an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. What it's going to do? He will tell you things to come. Nothing is supposed to surprise the child of God. Wow, I didn't see that one coming. Holy Spirit said, duh, I saw it. You didn't listen. Can we read? He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine. And declare it to you. Wow. He will take of what is mine. I will declare it to you. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. And his fullness. And they that dwell therein. So Holy Spirit said. Holy Spirit what? will take of what is the Lord. And declare it to you. What is that? He will declare you the desires of your heart. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, if you are not being led by the Holy Spirit, I always say this in my house, there is no in between the spiritual realm. It's either you are being led by the Holy Spirit or by the evil spirit. And the evil spirit will lead you to its evilness. It is important as a child of God that before you take any action, filter whatever you are about to do with the word of God. What does the word of God say about this? The moment you ask, ask asking yourself those questions, you are opening up the voice of the Holy Spirit to talk to you. You cannot make decisions using the filters of the information of the world. You can never make a holy decision based on the filters of the media, based on the filters of the newspapers or Facebook or Twitter whatsoever. No, whatever decision that you make, ask yourself this question. What does the word of God say about this? Can I think about this? Can I sit down and discuss this? When you do that, what does the Holy Spirit do? He will take of what is God, of what is Jesus Christ, and declare it to you why you have opened up yourself for his counsel. Hallelujah. Right now, the church that Jesus Christ died for is making decisions based on the statistics. I will not go to church. I will not do this. But when a hunger speaks, 
We don't pray and ask for protection. We jump into our car for the hot wings and chicken licking. To the person who has touched a thousand plus debit cards or money. And here you are coming, you are, when you go to church, the chances of your pastor touching you or anybody touching you are slim, if not next to zero. So ask yourself, which filters are you using to make those decisions? Is it the Holy Spirit? The answer is what? No. Be led by the Spirit. Can we finish reading verse 15? All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of, one, of mine and declare it to you. He wants to declare to you mysteries. There are certain areas of your lives. You know, there is something that I've discovered about myself. Is that I don't know myself. Every time when I go into intimacy in prayer with God, I come up with the new me. I said, okay. I didn't know that I can think like that. I didn't know that I can apply my mind like that. Holy Spirit wants to expose the real you to you. The you that you are living with now has been shaped by the information of the world. The real you that is molded by the word of God, is waiting to come out. That's the reason why the Bible said, for, for the earth is what? Is, is groaning. Waiting for what? For the manifestation of the sons of God. Why are the sons of God not, not manifesting? Because of the wrong filters. They are using the filters of the world. Instead of the word. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. Say neighbor. Holy Spirit loves you. Number three. The Holy Spirit is here to reveal. I was saying this to Mr. Tusi and Mr. Vaiti. Someone would say, but why are you talking about Mr. Vaiti and he's not here? No, he went back home. We were together at work. I said to him, the most expensive thing in this world is not knowing. Not knowing is expensive. Not knowing is expensive. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit is here to reveal things to you. There are certain things that we were not supposed to do in our lives. There are certain decisions that we were not supposed to take in our lives. But because of the lack of the revelation from the Holy Spirit, we took those decisions. And even to this day, the consequences are still with us. 1 John 2, verse 27. 1 John 2, verse 27. First John 2, verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you that you do not need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaching you concerning all things that is true and not a lie. And just as he has taught you, taught you, you will abide in him. Some people use this scripture outside the revelation for not going to church. He said, the Bible said, I don't need anybody to teach me anything. No. You must know the audience of the word. Whom was it returned to? What was happening? Let me give you an example. Before the children of Israel received the Holy Spirit, they had the Ten Commandments. And one of the Ten Commandments said, do not steal. Ne? Guess what they did? They stole. Why? They did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to teach them within themselves not to do it. They knew, but their spirit man was not, had, did not have any information. I'm not sure if you get me. They had had knowledge, 
not spiritual revelation. So when the Bible says you do not need anyone to teach you, it's because now we have now moved from head knowledge to what? To spiritual revelation. So there are certain things that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to your spirit man. There are certain revelations that only you can carry them. Are you aware that if you don't spend time with the Holy Spirit, there are certain people who want to know information about themselves because you did not get it. God is depending upon you. There are certain revelations that he will give you and somebody will say, how did you know that? And you will say, or they will ask you, who are you? You will say, no, I, I'm, the, I'm the child of God. I'm saved. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But how did you know that about my life? No, flesh and blood did not reveal that to me. But the Holy Spirit, who knows everything, revealed that to me. And they will say, no, I want that Holy Spirit. Do you want him? Only those who have received and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Really? Yes. And we call that salvation. Okay. Wow. That's so deep. That's so deep. Why? You, you, you are walking in revelation. Somebody says, you know what? But my son is, you just find yourself saying, how did you know when I got to the flu? Uh, 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 I don't know. But I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I, it has happened to me several times. I remember the day that I called uh, my son here, our worshiper, because the Holy Spirit told me to call him as he wants to, he wants to come back home. When I called him, he said, hello. I began to reveal to him what was happening in his life. I said to him, you have received a call. So and so is complaining about something. And the Holy Spirit said to me, this person must go and do one, two, three. He said, Papa, how do you know that? I mean, I haven't spoken to you for weeks. How do you know that? It was the Holy Spirit revealing himself to him, confirming to him what he must do next. So are you aware that there are a lot of people who are walking in darkness and you are carrying their revelation? When you are led by the Holy Spirit, he uses you to reveal himself to others. I don't want to say this. But I will say it. Imagine somebody goes and falls and gets into trouble because the person that God trusted with information did not seek the face of God in prayer. I was telling one of the intercessors that lately I'm praying for people that I've never met, that I will likely not never meet them. I was praying for a family in Ukraine. I saw their house. I saw everything. God said, pray for them. I prayed for them. And I prayed for the family. They were driving in a bucket. They were going somewhere. God said, protect them. They were driving in, in between pine trees. God said, pray for their protection. I prayed for them in Eastern Europe. I've been in Indonesia praying for people that I've never met. Why would, you know, be in a space where God will reveal to you someone that you've never met. You'll just see the face and God will say, pray. And you save a life. And person receive their, their breakthrough. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer. Let First Thessalonians 5.17 be your portion. Praying without ceasing. Hallelujah. John 2.27, we read it. Galatians 1.16. 
Galatians 1.16. Are we getting somewhere, Bazalwane? Are we getting somewhere? Let's start from 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. So Holy Spirit reveals Jesus in you. Wow. Mm. The revelation of Jesus in you. He reveals him to you. Not flesh and blood. Jesus, the Son of God. Being made manifest to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was driving to Venda, as soon as I was about to approach the last bridge to Kranskop, I could feel the presence in my car. I decided to look straight. I said, I'm not looking on my path because I was driving alone. And Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, began to reveal to me what is about to happen. But he gave me the one stern warning that I want to share with you today. He said, don't do this because this is where your death will come from. So God loves you so much. He wants to reveal the son to you. Do you know what does that mean? What Jesus did, you'll do. The revelation of Jesus Christ to you does not come empty-handed. It comes with the power of his person. Christ the Lord. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hence, you should be led by the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul said, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. He knew that flesh and blood will make him miss the heavens. Don't confer with flesh and blood. Be led by the person, the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. I said it before many times that my wife now has admitted that he's married to someone who talk to someone he cannot see. Because she will hear me responding verbally. So oh yes, God. She said, what did you say? I said, no, I'm not talking to you. And she won't, she won't ask me, whom are you talking to? She now knows. I'll just say, yes, God. Okay, okay, yes, God. Let it be so. How about this Holy Spirit? And he will respond. I said, oh, okay. I understand. So, okay, pray for so and so. I said, what is happening? I said, no, this and this is happening. There are words released against them. Just nullify the words. Their life will be fine. You know, in other words, I'm telling you that there are certain things in your life that when you understand how the Holy Spirit functions, you don't pray for the situation. You pray for the word released that caused the situation. And the situation stops. I did not know that. He said, just nullify the words. The person will be fine. I prayed against the words. And I received a testimony. You know, they did this and they said, okay, I know. I know, I know. Give me the good news. The son wants to manifest himself in you when you are led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here to empower you. Mm. I love this one. Powered by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Have you ever seen a car written powered by Ford? Powered by Mercedes-Benz? Those who are powered by the Holy Spirit, this is my imagination. You can have your own imagination. But I believe that when I walk, because I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, 
There is a big spiritual burn above me, written, powered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's my belief. I, I'm talking about me. So imagine now, you are walking in the spiritual realm. There is a white flag flying above you, powered by the Holy Spirit. Which witchcraft spirit will attempt to touch that person? They will warn each other when, when you are leaving your house, going to Deben driving, the whole entry will have received the warning. We saw a flag written, powered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's coming your way. <laughs> if I were you, <laughs> I will move because there is nothing that you can do. I don't know who said this, one of the great generals of God. He said, yet the demons arguing about among themselves, saying, you go touch him. The other one said, no ways. I know that if I go, they will die. He said, that one said, no, you go. He said, no ways. I'm not going. He said, but we, we cannot go back without accomplishing our mission. He said, no, no, no. Look at him. Look at him. He's fire. Look at him. Can you, go, you go touch him. The, so the argument started, you go touch him. You go touch him. You go touch him. He said, no. I end up falling asleep. Because they were still arguing. And he doesn't know what happened after that. So imagine, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The argument about you is not, uh, you destroy the car, I will destroy the house, and then after that I will take the children. No. They must not reach that stage. They must say, mm -mm, that one, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. he's led by the Holy Spirit. You know that if he can wake up now and start praying, he will pray the right prayers and we are dead. The moment he starts praying in tongues, we are gone. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.16 in closing. And Colossians 1.11. 2 Corinthians 10.4. Acts 1.8. Let, let us read Acts 1.8. He said that you shall what? You shall receive what? Power. What is the power? It's not the power to lift up a chair. It's not the power to push a car. It is not the power to work a lot. Dunamis. What is dunamis? Explosive power. Dynamite power. And do you know that when you have dunamis, you walk also with exosia, delegated authority. What is delegated authority? You have the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ and that gives you dunamis. Do you know who you are? Can you please stand up? Can you please stand up? I want those who know that they are powerful to stand up and lift up their hands. I surrender. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. Talk to him. Just begin to say, Holy Spirit, I might have missed you. I might have made mistakes. Somewhere, somewhere, I might have missed you. I might have missed you. I might have missed you. Somewhere, somehow, I might have missed your voice. But tonight, Holy Spirit, I want to be led by you. I want to be led by you. I'm tired of being led astray by my emotions, by my feelings, by hearsay, by all that. I want to walk with you, Holy Spirit. Hold my hand because I know though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. Who must they be referring to? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He loves you so much. He missed you. He missed you. He missed you. He said, where is my daughter? Every time I say east, she goes west. Every time I say south, she goes east. I'm tired of seeing my son. 
struggling whereas I am the solution. I'm tired of seeing my daughter struggling whereas I am the solution. Where is my daughter? Where is my son? How can he struggle in my presence? How can my girl struggle in my presence? How can my, my daughter walk aimlessly in my presence? I knew her before she was formed in her mother's womb. I knew him before he was formed in her mother's womb. I know what this daughter of mine is destined for. I know what this son of mine is predestined for. I miss you. I want to walk with you. I miss you. That's the Holy Spirit. I want to walk with you. I want to be involved in your decision making process. For I know the future. I know the past. I know the present. I believe and know that I'm the best person to take your life forward. Church of Christ, this is the time for the church to arise and be led by the Holy Spirit. I want you, wherever you are, lift up your hands and say, Father, I surrender all to you. Holy Spirit, lead me. Be my father. Be everything that I need. Be my counselor. Be my financial advisor. Be my relationship advisor. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. I'm tired of making these mistakes. I'm tired of hitting a brick wall after a brick wall. As if you do not exist. Holy Spirit, I need you tonight. I need you tonight. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Take over every facet of my life. 